So how Zimmer works is you have to basically be activated as a insurance holder. Like a policy holder, you have insurance, you can't insurance for one year. Same thing with Zakat. You become an insurance holder. So you become activated as a Nisab holder the first time in your life when you have Nisab, the minimum amount, the minimum threshold. So in this person's scenario, for example, we can see the doctor's line, the start of the holy, Jumal Al-Ukhra, Jumal al okay? A person had above the Nisab. So he has been activated as a Nisab holder. So the year will pass all the months, one year later, again, after Jawan al Ula, okay, where Jawan al from the second month, he has more than he saw, hence he had to pay Zilat. He has at that time how much? 300 pounds. So he has to see how much he has on the following year. You don't pay Zilat on what you had last year, okay? neither do you pay upon what you had during the year. The fluctuations are not considered. Okay? Fluctuation will only be considered when they go to zero or minus. So if you had zero, if the person had zero or he went, he went into a negative situation, his date will be cancelled and discarded. It will be resetted. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how much up and down you go. Okay? All you do is look at the last date on the same date that you had in the beginning, one year later. How much do you have? If you have any sum or more, you have to pay. If you don't have any sum, you don't have to pay. Then the following year, again, you use the same date over and over again. That's all. It's that one cycle. So you use that one date across the every single day. You use the same date. Okay. So this person, he had three hundred pounds. Two point five percent of three hundred pounds is seven pound fifty. Seven pound fifty. Now I say it's money. This person he has to pay seven pound fifty. So seven pound fifty is blessing the wealth. It's purifying the wealth, right? And it's growing the wealth. So for seven pounds fifty, you have blessed your wealth. You have purified your entire wealth. You have been saved from calamities. As sadaqah that's for our sadaqah in words of calamities. Okay, seven pound fifty is your share of qiyam. Sadaqah will be a shade on Qiyamah. Whatever you give a Sadaqah and Zakah, that will be a shade for you on the day of judgment. So this person, with £7.50, he saved himself from the torment of Qiyamah, from the sweat, because the sun will be so close. Isn't that a bargain? Where is he a chance to bond with Allah? That Allah, you're so merciful, you, you through this contumely of payment, you're purifying, purifying my will. I am receiving the benefit, nobody else. I'm receiving all the benefit in this world and Akhirah. Okay. So we have to bond with this pillar and we in reality bond with Allah, who is the one who imposes this pillar upon us. So it's not a tax. And that's what I want to really mention. Don't consider zakat to be a tax. Don't have a burden on. Oh, no, a thousand pounds of zakat. Imagine a thousand pounds that is doing for you. You're buying your spot on the Amish under the throne of Allah. You're shady. That's what you do with a thousand pounds. You're sorting out your Akhirah. You're sorting out your dunya. Zakat, this is another example now where a person, he had, he was activated, Jumal al-Ukhra, Jumal al So it's sort of the whole, but as you can see, his wealth fluctuated. Okay? Sorry? Question? I think you're about to explain what's going on. Okay. So we've got a couple of examples like this, right? So this is above the below the Islam, basically. So a person, he was activated as a Islam holder, but one year later, he has below the Nisab. Now, no Zakat is due because the net Zakat will asset at Zakat due date is below Nisab. Okay? The assets are below Nisab, so there is no Zakat. Okay? So, the person have above, above Nisab, but look, he dips in horror. Okay? He goes below a negative situation. So, his, any day which he had previously is cancelled. Then, Again, the next, so when a person goes into zero or minus, he'll have to wait until the next time he has Nisab amount. When he has the next time Nisab amount, he will mark that date in his calendar, okay, and use that date the following year. That's all. So the next time in his bank, after going to minus or being insolvent or bankrupt, the next time you get assets, 
zakatul assets equally nisab you'll make a note of that date and wait for another year and see if you have nisab that's how it works that's only how it works it's easy to calculate your zakat if you follow these steps number one sum up the value of all zakatul assets the first thing we know we have to add okay after adding something we will deduct something calculate the value of all debtable liabilities debts or liabilities number three determine your net zakatul assets figure so what are zakatul assets cash and liquid assets that's the first thing cash so in essence we have six zakatul assets okay six all together gold silver cash gold silver and cash that's three business stock animal and livestock and agricultural produce so gold silver and cash business stock animal and livestock agricultural produce is these six things are classed as the kind of assets so the first thing all cash is fully subject to zakat all cash where the cash may be okay so where can cash be give us an example where can a person have cash so the uh, first thing is mattress that's what we know mattress right how much is it is illegal to have such an amount in the house i think over 2000 is it is it low right i'm saying finance right so the fca will be you know, the financial crime will come fca you will come to you right so this is only a certain limit you're allowed to keep in the house so wherever the money is kept where is under the mattress behind the wall okay and the painting under the carpet okay in your socks right you have a drawer of something you money there or is in a bank account all your cash regardless is subject to the okay? all your cash wherever you may be even if i've given cash to my brother this home is for me as a deposit you got the safe keeping purposes okay we got this money i'll come and pick it up tomorrow that's all the rich okay so wherever the cash is subject to the card interest If for some reason we know interest is haram, a Muslim wouldn't deal with interest with his own free will. He's in a, will believe that he's in a difficult situation and he's going to a position where he has to take interest for some reason. Okay, so he's doing toba, but he has interest money. So interest money is not subject to zakat. Okay, that money, hundred percent of it will be given to charity, gold and silver. Okay, now gold, hundred fifty. Okay, with whatever you. Have. Now the hundred fifty is look, whichever form is subject to the whichever form is is subject to the card, even if they are worn or stolen. If you follow the hundred fifty of it, all your gold, wherever it may be, however expensive it is, is subject to the card. Whether you wear it, whether you store it, whether it's your memory from twenty years ago when you were married, and it's preserved somewhere, that is also subject to the card. Okay, that's the point in the hundred fifty school. Other schools. If used as a personal item, then gold and silver jewelry are not zakatable. That means basically, now this is our opinion. But if it's whatever a sister wears, generally it's one, like one set, and she has one wedding set. Is a general thing. She doesn't have excess in gold. Then her gold and silver will not be zakatable. But if she has excess in gold, a lot of gold, and everybody sees, looks at her, this is a lot of gold you wear. It's excessive. Is more than normal. Then the entire gold will be subject to zakat. That's the point of the Shafi school and other sources of zakat. Okay. Mixed metals, mixed metal jewelry. Only zakat is valid if half or more of the metal is gold or silver. Okay. If it's twelve carats or above, then we'll pay zakat on that item. However, there's a more cautious view. Okay. Which is whatever there is, even if it's below the current, which pays a lot of money. So that's the more cautious view. You may also follow. Okay. Go to a jeweler and you or use the buying price from the jeweler. I mean, what is the cash equivalent of your gold? That's how you calculate the value. So you take your gold to a jeweler, and the value that he gives you, you will pay the cut accordingly on the gold, on that value. Business assets that are either cash. Or intended to result directly in cash generation, or subject to zakat. Anything purchased with the intention to resell is to be valued at its sale price for zakat purposes. For a businessman, he will not take into consideration the cost price 
rather than retail price. The retail price. For any business, the following items should be considered cash, receivables, stock, inventory, and raw materials. If you're a businessman, you will pay the cut on all these things. The following are not included goodwill and other intangible assets. There's no zakat in your goodwill, neither is there zakat on property, plant, equipment. A businessman will not have to pay zakat upon his building. Neither will he pay zakat upon the table values, or on the fridge, the freezer, the shelves. Okay, Samples he has. He may have some samples lying around. Okay. No zakat upon that. What? Goodwill is basically a reputational value of a business. So some businesses, for example, I'll, I'll take the name of McDonald's, right? What is the store with the name, the brand, has a value? Who can say NZF, right? If you were to sell NZF, then the brand has value. That's goodwill. So it has a, a value that the name, the logo, the brand has a value to it. Inventory is actual stock. Okay? Inventory is actual stock. There's a whole discussion, can you sell goodwill? Uh, is it permissible to sell goodwill? Classically, a majority of scholars have the opinion that it's not permissible to sell goodwill. Right? And that's why they give the opinion that if you want to sell goodwill, because goodwill adds another 30, 40,000 pounds to your business, it's, it's a brand, you're selling the name. Okay? So what they say is you inflate the price of the actual business and incorporate the goodwill in there. So in that way, you are covering for your goodwill. However, there's one mufti now who has the opinion you can't sell, you can't sell goodwill because it's been recognized as a commodity and I personally also lean towards that opinion, right? The dog, the dog cook, right? It's just something that it makes more sense nowadays. So it all comes down to intention. And that's why in business talk, it's all about intention. Meaning, whatever you're intending, when you buy something, you've, in, you've intended that you're going to resell that. That's why we subject to second. And that's what a shopkeeper does. Whatever he has in his shop, has he bought that to take away to his house and give it to his children? So I have a sweet shop. If I bought all the sweets to give to my sweet children at home, I'm going to ruin their teeth. Right? Rather, I bought those sweets to sell. So business stock and business goods are those which you are bought to resell. Is that intention alone? Okay. So notice the guy due on the house in which you live. You never bought your house to resell. Okay? You bought your house to live in. There's no zakat upon that. Even if you are selling your house, so I start advertising my house, okay? In the interim, I don't have to pay zakat upon it, even though it's being sold. Why? Anybody know the answer? Why won't I have to pay zakat on my house, which is now being advertised, and I want to buy it, I want to sell the house? What's the answer? Sorry? Close. A bit more. Huh? Okay, good. But in principle, before that, it's a same commodity now, isn't it? I mean, it's, I've been advertised. Because I never bought to sell it in the first place. Remember, business commodities are those which are bought to resell. Well, Pia, did I buy this house to sell? No, I was living in it first in my personal home. Very often I decided to sell. So yet you were right. Only when you sell it, the money you get from there. Whatever remains in your account on the US account day, that is what you pay the account on. Likewise, your car. If you have a nice car, your personal car, is this account your car? No? On all your personal assets, there's no zakat. No zakat whatsoever. Just right now, I received a phone call on the way. So we have a hotline number. Okay, our Zakat hotline is 033 125125. I'll tell you again so you can know that down. So I see some call on this hotline, and she was asking that she was told she has to pay Zakat on all her clothes. So she said, I have so many clothes. Can you imagine this? She said, I have so many clothes, and I was told by some random auntie or uncle in the family. Zakat is due on all the clothes. He said, how am I going to do that? Because my each you know, pay is worth so much. I'm going to go negative if I would do that. She said, is this true? I said, of course not. How can Sharia impose the thing? And that's the thing. You know, Sharia is very much, it's, it's Sharia isn't rational, 
Nine is irrational, it's super rational. Okay? Meaning Sharia isn't against logic. But Sharia, logic alone cannot understand Sharia. But it's not illogical. It's super rational. So it's beyond your rational. But it doesn't go against your rational. So this system, this question is shows that Sharia doesn't go against logic. The house we live in is not subject to the God. No other house you own that you are renting out except on the surplus rental income. So if a person is renting out the house, okay, zakat is not due on the house value, only on the rental. And even with saying that, do I have to factor in and take into consideration the entire year's worth of rental? What do you think? Which rent will I take into consideration? Yeah, mashallah. What's left? 